am I adding unnecessary details into the picture that I wanted to finish relatively quickly? Yes, I am. Is it going to hold me back? Most likely. Just look at this guy. Don't forget to moisturize your lips before you put something on them. Because they will be nasty. I put some purple eyeshadow around this scar to recreate the bruising effect. Oh no, I just made it worse by smudging it. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, uh, I will keep it like that. I bid you welcome, or a welcome back. Happy Pride Month! I wanted to upload this video, but like two weeks ago, I just got caught up in stuff, so let's jump into this one really quickly. If you've seen uh, any of my works before, you will know that my favorite things to make are Frankensteinian monsters. They are my favorite kind of monsters, um, you know, despite how pretty much every classic universal monster now is a queer icon. Is there like a, an exception to that? I'm not entirely sure. Also, Frankensteinian monsters are just really fun to make. So I decided to do what I do best, including the procrastination, by the way, and make three Frankensteinian monsters based on three different pride flags. And this video is going to show the first one. This video is about a character who I created who is intersex and along with some trigger warnings, here's a really quick disclaimer I have to say. I am not intersex, I mean I didn't take a chromosome test, technically I could be like any other person on the world, but I am definitely someone who wasn't born with any characteristics that were later altered without my will. I can only talk about this topic as an outsider, and while the space I made and the video itself are really explicit and about a heavy topic, I wanted to go into it with as much respect and consideration as absolutely possible, and I want this video to be informative, acknowledging and empowering at the same time. I'm not a medical professional either, I know I look like one, but would you believe that I, I am not? I'm a digital Twitch painter with a microphone and with OBS installed on my PC. Therefore, all I can do is create something and talk about it, so let's get into it. These pieces will belong into a series that has exactly one character so far, and that is normally Sparkleface, who is a non-binary ghoul. This is a series that includes non-binary monster characters of different kinds, really showing the diversity that non-binary people can have by all of them having different characteristics. And also this series shows the more uncomfortable and hard sides of being a queer person, and will include one relationship with their own body, unlike most of the works I've seen on a regular basis about this whole topic, but uh, they will always have something hopeful and comforting about them. You might have guessed already how I wanted to make something more than just designs based on flags, I know many people do this exact same thing in one way or another, but I wanted something much more true to my regular works and include heavier topics and show the more melancholic side of these characters and give them a more in-depth story than just being based on a set of colors. I named the first monster Bubbles Icti, summoning the spirit of mermaid that I ended up skipping. Here's an underwater Frankensteinian monster named after the Ichthyostega. Wait, what is, what is that you ask? Well, that is one of the first creatures that ever left the sea to become a terrestrial being. You will understand why this name matters in a moment. The base for this character was the intersex bright flag and the design started relatively simple by turning the character bright yellow and including a purple bruise around the circular stitches to form the flag itself. The other thing I was strongly thinking about and ended up including it in the end was the scars that go over the chest and the lack of nipples, which is, besides being a nice looking element, a hint to them going through top surgery where they got breast tissue removed, which is a form of gender-affirming surgery that you can assume bubbles didn't end up going through because they were created from multiple people. And I feel like here comes the more grim part of the entire series, which is that Frankensteinian monsters are created by humans, they are forced into existence, which is a pretty dark thought, especially if you seriously consider antinatalism for a second. My answer is definitely that forcing uh, someone into existence, especially this way, literally stitching dead people together to create a new one, is a deeply immoral for the creator and um, even more traumatizing for the victim of the act. Okay, but why does Bubbles have all these suspicious scars? That's because they were created, then immediately underwent the removal 
of their tentacles without their consent. Not long into the project, I realized that Babus, who didn't even have a name by that time, could be based on the blue ring octopus, but with a twist, where the purple rings are the marks of the surgery that was performed to remove the tentacles. Remember that they were partially based on the Ichthyostega, one of the first four-legged creatures that left the ocean, where uh, there is no longer a place for tentacles. It is obviously a direct reference to some intersex people going through surgery after being bored without their consent. See, being intersex means that someone is born with a combination of male and female biological traits, the most noticeable ones being the people born with genitalia that is in some way a combination of both. I'm afraid to put pictures into the video, I recommend you to google what the different variations of intersex genitalia look like and they can be really diverse, but they have one thing in common and that is them being seen as abnormal and something that needs to be fixed. You see where this is going and I'll spell it out to you directly. The removed tentacles are a metaphor for someone's genitalia being altered, like an enlarged clitoris or partially formed penis being cut out in order to make the body look like a regular feminine body. Also the breasts are something that doesn't get touched on children, but Bubbles is not a child, so they got their breasts removed, or at least the nipples were not included when forming the new chest by the creator to achieve the more massive masculine body for some reason. This sounds contradictory, but I wanted to include both versions of a surgery, like that being visible on the body of Bubbles who appears androgynous, and based on the fact that they use they them pronouns, this could even be their most preferred body, but it comes with a but. Because it was not their choice, the choice was ripped away from them by the creator who had a specific thing in mind instead of letting their creation decide for themselves. The exact same way many intersex people get their bodies altered instead of letting them be the way they are until the person can decide for themselves whether or not they want to see these alterations being performed on them. For me, someone who is 100% on the side of bodily autonomy for everyone, the second one is obviously the best choice. In the end, the most important thing is that bubbles may have been turned into something without their will, but it's not something that defies them and not something that strips away the beauty that can be found despite the scars that remain. I didn't realize this uh, one thing while making the piece, but I gave them the eyes that also form the intersex pride flag. And unintentionally, this is something that implies that they were not just created to be intersex or forced to be androgynous or anything like that, they were always like that no matter what happened to their body. If there is one message I want to convey with this piece, it is that someone being the victim of getting their body modified for being intersex is a traumatic process that can leave someone scarred both physically and mentally, meaning um, that obviously leaving the decision to them is the only morally good thing to do. But if someone is unfortunate enough to be forced into existence in a body that is then forcibly altered to fit someone else's will, it is not something that defies them as a person. It is not something that stops them from being intersex and is definitely not something that makes them unlovable, despite the tragedy of getting the decision to alter or to not alter their body ripped away from them. Babus is a character with a short little story behind them who is part of this little series now and other people will uh, come with their own things, some more lighthearted than the story of Bubbles and they will have one thing in common and that is having a necklace, which is uh, the shape of a red heart and one of the characters from this series is the jewel maker who created all of them and gifted them to the others, but that's for another time. For now, all I will say is that the necklace of Normily is a broken heart that represents their struggle with self-acceptance, and the necklace of Bubbles is one with a hole on it, vaguely resembling the flag, but also resembles the blue ring octopus and the thing removed from the person. Also some pearls that are a sea motif, and the others from the series are going to have different necklaces. More about that next time, but for today, Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Create something, even if it involves an uncomfortable and serious topic, because there are many things that are worth talking about that would otherwise be swept under the rug. But most importantly, don't forget to have fun while doing that. Farewell. Strengthen some of these lines that I smudged way too much. Okay, note to self, if I want to make something that shows up in this small camera in that corner, I should always exaggerate stuff, like make these uh, stitches bigger than how big they should be. I like the fact that for some reason right now it feels like I don't have eyebrows. Like, do you see that? Like, uh, this, these uh, vertical lines kind of overshadow my eyebrows. 
that is like really faint by default, but it's still there. 